Hey everybody, what's up? This is Steve. Uh, I am recording this for you at 2.15 in the morning Eastern Standard Time on Sunday. And uh, we've got uh, Father's Day coming up next weekend, I think it is. And uh, I thought I'd go ahead and break out one of the things that uh, I got here from my family a couple years ago. One of the last trips that we took to Disney. We stayed at Art of Animation. And uh, my wife had this done for me and gave this to me for Father's Day that year. So I thought I'd put that as the background, kind of commemorating the upcoming uh, Father's Day. So I've got about uh, four or five comics. These are gonna be all golden age, all from 1945 or prior. And um, after I show the first two books, we're gonna do a little uh, salute to America. Uh, kind of theme, uh, maybe a little patriotic kind of theme, and um, I'm going to be playing some music in the background, so check it out. Once we get to that point, you'll know. <laughs> Hope you enjoy. Thanks. All right, to start this off, I've got uh, two comics here. The first is uh, Our Gang number 19 from 1945, and I think this is a Carl Barks cover. I got these all from the same store. This store has been putting out issues that they've uh, picked up from collections over the last year. And they've been slowly putting these out like every weekend. So every weekend they've got new stuff out so far. And uh, I, I used to watch our gang in the seventies on, uh, I think it was Saturday afternoon, like around 11, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, they'd start playing the uh, <clears throat> Buck Roger or not. Yeah. Buck Rogers old serials and Flash Gordon. And uh, every now and then they throw on an Hour Gang episode or two with uh, Buckwheat, Spanky, Froggy, Darla, Alfalfa and all of them. And uh, I've always loved Our Gang. So I saw that, I knew I had to get it. I uh, paid 29 bucks for that issue. Again, that's Our Gang number 19 from 1945. Next one, I just picked up uh, Saturday afternoon and um this is a great cover this has got some skulls on it beautiful yellow cover decent copies got some spine issues this is super magician volume two number six from 1943 with the uh blackstone magician on here on the cover look at that is that not awesome or what gave 20 bucks for that this is a store that grades most of their books. They say that's a three. Man, I think that's beautiful. Look at that. That says October 1943 up there. Look at those skulls on that cover. That is a great cover. Gorgeous. All right, now we're gonna get into my uh, more patriotic portion. As I mentioned, everything here is 1945 or prior. That means, um, well, I, actually everything was like 41 to 45. I, I don't know what the old state on these were, but uh, that means it was during World War II. So I have a deep interest in things, all, all things World War II. Oops, sorry about that. Well, lately, I've been uh, trying to collect things that have a specific letter that was on printed media, and I came across a lot. It was like $5 for the lot and then $7 to ship. And I just thought this was cool. These aren't comics. These are magazines, and these are um, Wings for Victory and the Battle Production. This, these are all from 1945, and these uh, appear to be just magazines that they sent out to... Uh, employees, I guess, that uh, help work on the production lines for um, Army and Navy aircraft. And uh, this first one is Wings 1945, or Wings for Victory in the Battle for Production, January 1945. And on the front, you can see the cover. These guys are look like they're installing an engine in an aircraft. And then on the back, there was usually something on the back of all these. And that says, Britain's dependable Berlin Buster, the giant Lancaster bomber, whose wrecking proclivities 
access lands will long and sorrowfully remember. Cool thing, all these were from, uh, they all have a, um, a uh, address on the back. And these apparently all belong to Lucas Brenning at 1975 Eucalyptus in San Carlos, California. I imagine he worked on the production in 1945. So there's the first one. Uh, I don't have February. I do have March 1945. This is a great cover. Looks like some pot, some guys that were probably on a bomber team or a... Um, Definitely a pilot or a colonel or something in there. And then on the back, you got another great photo on the back. And this one says, Navy PBM-3 Mariner taking off at a Pacific base with the help of two jet assisters mounted under the wing. A close-up of the Jato unit is shown in the insert. And I guess that's what they're talking about right there. But yeah, that is a really cool photograph who knows what island that is maybe that's midway no clue and then again like i said all from the same person these uh first couple were kind of beat that one's a little bit better but looks like uh three of these out of the five they might have they must have had in a binder and this is a beautiful cover this is uh from april 1945 and there you see some uh, people that have been stranded on the ocean. The pilot's flying over, dropping probably a couple uh, rafts, maybe some supplies, who knows, until somebody can get out to them. Let's see what we got on the back of this one. Oops. That's a great one. So that says, remote controlled turrets like those on the B-29 and weapons combinations from 50 cal machine guns to 75 millimeter cannon make the army's new a26 invader the world's hardest hitting as well as the fastest attack bomber that is really cool to see something like that uh next one here is from may of 1945 man this is crazy when you think about how big this is so that is a Super Fortress landing gear, as it says on the cover. You can see the guy is standing almost to full height. <clears throat> At about full height, he would be just a little bit taller than the wheels, it looks like. Now, I was in the Marine Corps from 1992 to 1998 in the air wing. And uh, I was deployed at one time with the um, C-130 squadron while I was in Okinawa. We, we deployed to uh, Australia for some training. And um, I, I, I had to uh, roll one of these tires up to him one day. And these suckers are huge, man. So, <coughs> excuse me. Anyway, on the back, you got a great photo. This says the Navy's Privateer PB-4Y2 is a long-range land-based bomber. Each of her six powered operated turrets carries two 50 caliber machine guns. Hence, she needs no fighter protection. I bet the guys in the plane would have begged to differ because the more support you had, I would imagine, back during World War II, the better, the safer you felt, right? Um, this last one is really the reason why I bought this lot. Like I said, I got it for like $5 or $7 shipping. Um, this has a, a, a war bond drive letter uh, for, I believe, the final war bond drive that they did and this one was uh, signed by the admirals and generals of the uh, Navy and uh, Army and imploring the American people one last time to dig and, and give deep so this is uh, Wings for Victory in the Battle of Production from June of 1945 as I've stated many times, <laughs> this letter right here, I just think is so cool that they printed on all this media from June to July of 1945. There are several comics out there. I've got a couple of them that I've shown that have that. Uh, lots of magazines. And, you know, the companies weren't required to do that, but they were trying to help out in the war effort. And I just think that's really cool. 
cool piece of uh, memorabilia to have, to be able to find something like that today still laying around. All right, now let's get back to the comics. I've got three left, and these are all World War II related. This first one I got today for $5. Now it's low grade. The reason I say it's low grade, centerfold's detached, the cover is detached, but this is It Really Happened number two from 1944. <clears throat> Excuse me, and it's actually got a war cover on it. How about that for five bucks? It doesn't look that bad, but that cover is uh, detached. It only has one staple, which at this point in the war, uh, most comics, I don't know if all comics, but most comics, I believe, we're only using one staple. And the staple on this one is right about there. So, <clears throat> not really halfway up the book, but it only has one staple in it. They were doing that to conserve steel for the war effort. And this book, on every page as you flip through has uh, little uh, World War II propaganda slogans on the bottom of each page, you know, like um, loose lips sink ships and things like that. But at the end, uh, since this was so low grade, I decided to open it up and show every page. There's a great advertisement with, um, I can't remember who's in the front of the book, but there's a character in the front of the book talking about how he invented pockets and he, uh, he wishes that he never would have done that because people were keeping spare change that they could have contributed to war bonds and uh, things that, you know, our, our soldiers and and uh, everybody else needed, you know, trying to dig deep into your pockets. He wish he never would have created them. Really cool. I'm going to post that on my Instagram account as far as just that little piece of uh, propaganda. I thought that was great. And uh, at the end of this video, like I said... It's going to be about a minute and a half long, and I've got that to some period piece music as well. Um, just something I, f I found that was royalty free, it said. We'll find out. But uh, I thought, you know, five bucks, I'd go ahead and show the whole thing, just open it up. So, uh, next thing I've got this is another uh, World War II cover. This is cool. I've never seen this one before. Um, this is Target Comics, Volume 5, Number 7, from January of 1945. And it looks like we've got some probably Japanese soldiers and tanks here. And then we've got the, uh, I would assume that's American, <laughs> an American riding on a, a cavalry horse here trying to uh, ambush them or attack them. But... Just a great, cool cover. So, coming up on the last book. <clears throat> Jerry, if you're watching, I think you'll like this one. I, you probably have it, but... I mean, I saw this and I couldn't pass it up. So... Um, I've shown this to a couple people on pictures. Actually, I think the only person I've shown it to is Night Tiger. But... Uh, <clears throat> A couple weeks ago, I was in this shop, the one that I got all these from, except for the Wings to Victory magazines. And uh, I was in this shop, and they had just started putting out some of the stuff that they had bought in collections. And I, I got the Captain Marvel um, uh, Wheaties comic that day. And this is the other one I've got, or I, one of the others that I picked up. I, I picked up three books that day. And... Um, this is the most expensive one that I picked up that day. And it's a graded comic. And if you guys watch my channel, you know how I feel about grading comics. I don't like putting them in plastic and slab. I understand why people do it. I just like to look at them and read them and, and smell them and, and feel them and touch them and know they're mine. So <clears throat> this is one of the collections, you know, had, had this graded book in there. And uh, like I said, Jerry, you might like this if you don't have it already, but... This is uh, WoW Comics, number 28, Fawcett Publications, from August 1944, has off-white pages, Jack Binder cover and art, and Ed Ash art, and it says, Pinky appears in Mary Marvel's story. 
and this was great, a 5.0. I paid 89 bucks for this. And when I saw it, and I saw it was World War II cover with superheroes, I was like, I'm buying that. I don't, I don't care if it's in a slab or what, but here you go. Wow Comics, number 28. And that is beauty. That is a beauty. I'm not sure who this guy is. I don't remember his name. But there he is. He looks like he's punching a Japanese uh, general. I don't know who that is. Maybe I, maybe one of the big guys. I don't know. And we got Mary Marvel. And we got this other guy. I don't know what he did. But there's a Nazi flag right there that he's destroyed something. Mary Marvel down there. Just a really, really cool book. <clears throat> and on the back, there's the back. You can see it was a 5.0, paid 89 bucks for it. Off White Pages, Wow Comics 28, 1944. All right, so that's all I've got, other than, like I said at the end, about a minute and a half long uh, posting, just showing you the interiors from that $5 book. I thought it was really cool. Um, if none of you have ever seen something like that, it's just kind of neat to see. And you can see all the slogans at the bottom. And uh, thanks for watching. Leave me a like, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of what I got. Thanks. I'm tired of beating about the bush.